Hi guys, uh, welcome back to the channel, Cubotics. Uh, so this is part two of the game that we were initially making of Ping Pong One. Uh, in the first one, as you can see that uh, we had made the paddle, we had got the ball ready, uh, we had made the game over. Also, we had done the scoring. Let me just show you that the variables. We had made a points variable. Yeah, so we could play the game. It worked well. Everything was fine. Uh, in case you haven't seen this video, I'll put it up in the link. Please go see the first video before you go on this because this is a continuation. Is where we're going to add a computer who we can play against. So this was just a one player game that we initially made. Now I'm going to convert this into a two player game. So it's quite easy to do that. Okay. And we're going to start now and I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing I'm just going to hide this variable points. Uh, if you can see, if you go to variable, there's a blue tick mark here. Just click on it, it goes away. Now, obviously, since we're going to make this a two-player game, uh, we need another paddle, right? So, let's go to sprites. You can choose another sprite. And again, search paddle. And you can place this on the top here. Okay, so now just for easy uh, coding, and I suggest every... Uh, student to do this is rename all your sprites so you understand now this one is called paddle if you want this call this you can call this paddle underscore player this is the ball which is fine the ball too you can name it underscore player because this is the yellow ball was for the uh, uh, paddle of the player the line also you can write line underscore player this one you can write paddle to ensure that you can write computer so it'll just help you keep track of all your sprites and you know exactly what you're dealing with and when i tell you to go to player paddle or ball or ball player you know you know which one to go to okay so let's start with the uh paddle of the computer this one if you want you can go change the color also uh, because you can see both are green so i will just go and change the color i'll show you how to do that go to costumes here on the top left hand side click on that and this will open up so you uh, click this to convert, you can see it's convert to bitmap, click this, you will get convert to vector here. Select any color that you like, uh, let's select a red color for the computer. Okay, once you selected your color, come to this option, it's called fill, click on it. This will get highlighted, take your mouse on this and just click here. Let me see why that's happened, click back. Okay, so we can do it in convert to bitmap only. Leave this as convert to bitmap and you can click. Now you can see that we got a red paddle up here uh, and we got a green paddle. So we know this is a computer paddle. Okay, now what is the next thing we need to do? We need, since it's a computer, it has to work automatically, right? It needs to follow this blue ball. This paddle needs to go wherever this blue ball is and hit it back to us, right? So how do we do that? Let's go to the paddle. Take a when flag click. It's just going to make it big and we're going to take a forever because again I need it forever to keep tracking the blue ball so the first thing I wanted to do is follow the blue ball so how do we do that let's suppose we say uh, let's set the X just to show you we had done the uh, so what is the X okay let's put it back up it just came down here so we're going to set the X. X of the paddle means the left and right of the paddle. This means set X. I want to set the left and right of the paddle as the same left and right of the ball. For to understand if the ball is going left, I need the paddle to go left. If the ball is going right, I need the ball or the paddle to go right. So basically what I'm saying is the X is what controls the left and right. So the paddle X should always be same as the ball X or the paddle. Uh, and similarly in the other way around so set X now obviously this can't be 135 so how do we do this is you go to sensing and you take backdrop of stage is below the reset timer take this backdrop of stage and put it here okay. now if you click here you can see that there is no X position here lot of students get confused so don't ever start with clicking this you can see stage click on stage and you will get what ball and the minute you click ball, you get all these options. It automatically goes to X position because it's the first one, but that's what you need to select. So what I'm selecting is I'm selecting the paddle X 
to the x position of the ball so just let's test it out and see so just to show you wherever my ball is going my paddle is also going in the same direction see it's tracking the ball yeah if i hit it on the right it goes on the right if i hit it okay so we got the computer moving along with the ball now what is the next thing we need to do we need that when the ball touches the paddle right it should again hit the ball down so very easily how do you do that you go to ball here okay and you take a when flag clicked i'm in the ball sprite take a forever and put an if then now what am i going to be touching here i'm in the ball so i'm going to be using the sensing to touch the paddle computer right so if the ball touches the paddle computer i just wanted to turn around 180 degrees so it'll make a u-turn so whenever the ball touches the paddle of the computer it should turn around let's test it out oops let's yeah there. you can see that this way i can actually play with the computer okay another thing that i had done just to tell you guys is initially i had put the uh, uh, the x and y were different values i made it zero zero so that the ball starts at the center of the screen instead of from the top because now if it starts from the top it'll touch the paddle and it'll start glitching so make this zero zero and just to make it a little easy you can put a weight here one second so it'll give you enough time to react so it'll come to the center yeah it'll wait one second and then fall down so it'll give you enough time to play this game you know and you can see this this is how we convert it to a two player game now um, I want to do the same thing that I had done for my uh, paddle right that I could control the left and right if you can see right now the paddle doesn't have the same control that we do the pl computer paddle that is so like we made a ball player what you can do is very simply first make a duplicate of this okay the minute you get a duplicate you can see a little ball will come up here okay you right click and you get I'll just show it to you again put your mouse here right click and you get the option of duplicate so you can see I have a ball player and I have a ball player too. So the first thing I'm going to do this is I'm going to call this computer underscore ball. Okay, and the ball is here. So just take it all the way and put it at the center of the computer paddle. Here it is here. If you can see, I've taken it and put it approximately at the center. Now what you want to do is you don't want this ball to go to play paddle player. You want it to go to paddle computer. So you can see that this ball now will go wherever the player uh, computer paddle will go. Now since I've done that, the similarly how I have done for the player paddle, yeah, we have done this code, right? If touching player paddle point towards ball player turn 180 degrees, change points by one. We're going to do the same thing. We are going to go to motion and point towards. We're going to just make this a little slow so you can see it next to each other so it's exactly the same code I'm doing this this code was for the player this code is for the computer so you can see you touching paddle player right we had turned 180 degrees which you've done here we pointed towards ball player here we're going to turn towards computer ball and so now the computer also depending on which side it hits the ball it will hit it back to us yeah so it's quite a interesting game now yeah okay so now like we have a scoring system let's make a scoring system if you remember we had in variables if I click this points okay and you can drag this down here and you can double click it so just to show you that in this way what will happen is every time i touch the ball i'll get a point but let's make a scoring system also for the computer right so we know who actually wins so it's quite easy to do that first you want you can get this a little more down yeah let's make another variable call it computer 
points. So I'm making a variable same way that I had done for the player. I'm going to set, put a set computer points to zero. And all I'm going to do is change a computer points by one year. So whenever he touches the ball, he will get a point. If I touch, I will get a point. You can double click on this. So yeah. So let's test it out. So you can see I got a point. Whenever the computer touches, he gets a point. Okay. Now what happens sometimes you may notice that your points may increase by two. Yeah, you can see that his score is seven and my score is 10. Now what happens is sometimes because it's a computer, the ball touches the panel so fast, it may touch it twice. It happens within a fraction of a second. So it's a very easy way of how to correct this is here where you have the change the points for both of them. Just go to control and take a weight, put a weight and make this point two. So I'm just increasing um, before it changes the point. It's just going to jump point two second. So there is no way that the ball will update the score by two seconds. So just put a weight two sec. Uh, two points sorry so put a point to here point to here so i'm just putting a weight before it again checks the score so by that time the ball has hit the paddle and gone back to the other player so it's not going to increase the score by twice two let's try it out now so you can see we were okay so i got one the computer has one now i got two because i touched it twice yeah so i don't think at any point yeah so we're going neck and neck as you can see Every time you touch it, you will get a point. Every time the computer touches, the computer gets a point. So we've done so much of the game. Okay. Now, what is the last thing we like to do in, before we end this video is to actually see if you won or the computer won, right? So like you have a red line here, let's put a red line for the computer as well. So all you need to do is go to line player. Again, put your mouse here and duplicate it. So you can see another line comes here. Hold this and take it. Take it as much at the top as you can. Yeah, there it is. Okay, if you want, you can take your paddle, the computer paddle, little down. That's fine. Go back to. Okay, now if touching, same thing. If touching ball, stop all. So in case you are able to beat the computer, if it touches his, it'll stop. If it touches your line, it'll stop. Okay, let's try it out. But you may notice something, and a lot of students have tried this. That it's almost impossible to beat the computer because uh, we are a human we are playing we may at one point falter and we may not be fast enough right guys we may slip but because we put the command as set x to ball x the computer calculates so fast it's almost impossible to beat the computer so what do we do to that let's make the computer more human like right because how does the human work we see the ball right then i understand what i need to do then i press the button left and right so there's something called a little lag Something I have to do is a little bit of waiting, right? Because my I see it, but my uh, hands actually have to do, do the movement. So let's do it same similarly for this. Let's go to the paddle computer and here you can put a maybe a wait point two seconds. So every time it moves, I'm asking it to wait before it makes the next movement. So let's try it out. You can see now it'll actually go a little slower. You can see that is actually. Yeah, and if you're fast enough. Yeah, you may be able to beat it. If you think that you yet can't beat it, you can increase the seconds here. You can try this point three. So keep changing this till it's fair enough. Like it's not too tough, not really hard. You know that you think you can just beat it sometimes. Sometimes it can beat you till obviously you get better. You know, so this is something that I recommend all students to try it out. Yeah, but this is a lot more fun. So, you know, and see if you can beat the computer. In the computer is a little fast. Let's try what happens if we do 0.5. Let's make it wait half a second. Let's see. Yeah, it's yet pretty fast. So keep increasing it, try different speeds. You know, in the next video, I'm going to also put the setting for the computer so we can try it out and 
we can see which one which level do we want to play easy medium and hard where the ball speed will change and the speed of the computer will change so i hope you enjoy this video guys um, you know try your own creation let me know how it went for you let me know what seconds did you guys put in here because every time you change the seconds also remember that the speed of the ball for example if i increase the speed of the ball to 15 as the speed of the ball will increase the computer see reaction time also needs to decrease because you can see if the speed ball yeah it becomes easier to beat the computer if you increase the speed of the ball but obviously that means you also have to play it a lot faster okay so um, i hope you like this video uh, subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy it send me your feedback let me know leave a comment to know what you guys did if you guys could make the project or if you had any feedback for me thank you take care guys bye bye